Hello community! Today we want to go beyond the classical graph neural network. And how we do this? We have simplicial complexes and graph neural networks. Yes, you read it right, we are talking about algebraic topology extensions to graph neural network. Now, if you remember in my last video, I was talking about a classical GNN. The task was link prediction or message passing as a tool, as a workhorse. And if we wanted to go beyond and faster, we encounter a problem in embedding in heterophilic uh, data set, feature sets in dyadic system, because of course a graph is uh, between an edge between two vertices. We have underreach if we have message passing in computational term with a number of n layers. And here we are now. And if you want a little bit further mathematical background to this topic, I have here two videos. The first one is the graph isomorphism problem and the Weisfeiler Lehmann test. This is a really, really old test, but it's beautiful. And in the first video, I show you here the graph isomorphism explained visually and message passing in neural networks. And then in the second video, we go from Weisfeiler Lehmann, the classical test, now to other versions where, if, for example, in a GCN, you can include a graph layer, a specific topological graph layer, and you get much better performance from this. But let's start at the beginning. What we want to do is we want to take advantage of more complex, powerful topological spaces by transforming our input graph. As I showed you in my last video, we do the rewiring from graph sage to get. But what we want to do now is uh, something we call a lift, a lifting, lift a graph into a higher dimensional topological space. It is a transformation attaching higher dimensional cells to the input graph by following certain rules. For instance, a graph can be lifted into a cell complex or the simplicial complex by attaching a higher dimensional cell to each click or cycle of the graph. And I will show you in a second what I mean. By doing so, the graph is replaced with a different space. And this is important. The graph is replaced with a different space that has more structure and can provide a better computational fabric for graph neural networks than the original graph. And you might say, hey, great, here we go. And yes, you are absolutely right. Just a little kind of a definition. This is, of course, algebraic topology. We are deeply in mathematics, but I want to explain the idea to you. Let's have a look. Unlike graphs, which are formed of nodes and cell, cell complexes can also contain higher dimensional structures or what we call in general cells. Now, you know vertices, vertices are zero cells, edges are one cells, surface areas are two cells, and so on. And to construct a cell complex, one can proceed hierarchically by gluing the boundary of a cell to other lower dimensional cells. And in a practical case, when the cells are formed from simplices, and this is simplices when we have the base is a triangle or a tetrahedra, then those spaces are also called simplicial complexes. So we have here two terms, please remember. Simplicial complexes, if we're talking about triangles, triangular structures, or cell complex in the more general case. And here we go. The next definition is, what is a simplex? Now, in pure geometry, a simplex is a generalization of a notion of a triangle. Or... If you want to go for a three-dimensional, a tetrahedron to arbitrary dimensions. And again here, zero simplex is a point or a vertex, a one simplex is a line segment, a two simplex is a triangle surface structure, a three simplex is the classical tetrahedron, a four simplex is a five cell, and in general, you can say a k-simplex, the generalization, is a k-dimensional polytope this is a geometric object with flat side, with flat faces, which is the convex hull of its k plus 1 vertices. And the convex hull is a very strict defined mathematical term, and, it's, and it means exactly what it says. It's a hull. It's an envelope, if you want. 
Now, if we want to construct simplicial complexes from simplices, it is easy. Because you have guessed it, a simplicial complex is a space with a triangulation. Let me show you an example in the next slide. Now, a triangulation is the division of a surface or a plane polygon into a set of triangles, usually with the restriction that each triangle side is entirely shared by two adjacent triangles. And here, entirely shared is the crucial wording. Now, a one-dimensional cell complex, you know, is a graph in algebraic topology. It consists of vertices, zero cells, edges, one cells. You know this. Now, here we have now a visualization. What is a simplicial complex? In mathematics, a simplicial complex, and here we have one example, is a set. So, multiple elements of composed of points or vertices in our case, if you think about a graph, line segments, these are typical our edges that connect the two vertices. Then we have triangles, and this is now a new space. We have a two-dimensional surface space between three edges. And, and now another even more complex dimensional part, the volume and the n-dimensional parts. And now we have here the volume of this tetrahedron. And this is the beauty of simplicial complexes. The underlying spaces are more complex mathematical topological spaces you can perform mathematics on. And I know what you're going to say, isn't this beautiful? And yes, here is even a little bit of a definition. So we have a zero simplex. It's a point, a vertex. And then we have a one simplex. This is our line segment. Then we have a two simplex. This is our new surface area, the triangle. We have a three simplex. This is the tetrahedron I just showed you in the last slide. And if you go to higher dimension, we have five cells, mathematical objects you don't have to care about. But what I want to show you is here. Now, you always have, if you have this set of elements, so you have two, for example, in the line segment, you have two vertices, two nodes, and one edge. This edge connects the two nodes. If you go a dimension up, you have three vertices, three nodes, you have three edges and you have one face to see what we call it. Now, the two-dimensional faces are surfaces and the three-dimensional cells are solids, are volume elements, if you want. But let's have a look at this. You will see this here if we look at the tetrahedron that I just showed you in the slide before. You remember? This is our tetrahedron. And I hope I'm right. Tetrahedron, we have four vertices, we have six edges, we have four faces, and we have one volume element, one cell here. Remember, this cell here is a definition within the simplex elements definition, but also the generalization we call a cell. So please do not mix this up. So four, six, four, one. Okay. The convex hull, here yeah, short definition of any non-empty subset of the n plus one vertices or points that define an n simplex is called the face of the simplex. And of course, faces are simplices themselves by definition, but we are not gonna look at mathematics. So the beautiful thing is now that we can interpret any graph as a simplicial complex with just three easy steps. We mark each complete graph and all subgraphs. As you can see here in our case, one, two, three, four nodes, we have one complete subgraph here in our triangle. Hey, hold on, hold on. Second, turn this into a simply shell complex. We convert each complete graph into a simplex by filling it in. I already did this with this beautiful color. And third, when two complete graphs overlap, their representations as simplices will share a vertex. This is in our case, we have here a vertex between this complete graph and this complete graph. Or if it's a higher dimension, it's not a vertex, a node. Sometimes it will be an edge, a two-dimensional, or even a surface element. So we can interpret any graph as a simplicial complex. Great. There's one number you might encounter, and this is the Euler characteristic of simplicial complexes. So just that you know, what is this? Where does it fit in? And I can tell you, if you look here, 
The Euler characteristics is just a simple number. You have, you take the number of the zero dimensional vertices, our nodes, minus the number of the edges, plus the number of triangular faces, and this is your Euler characteristic. If you want, here for example, the first uh, is for the tetrahedron. We have four vertices, six edges, and four faces. The Euler characteristic, the number is two. If you go for other elements, as you can he see here, you get Euler characteristics, which are, well, you will not going to believe it, characteristic for those elements. Now, pure simplicial complexes can be sort of a triangulation and provide a definition of polytopes. Now, you have here a torus. A torus, think of it as a hollow donut. And in mathematics, topology generalizes the notion of triangulation. It follows. What is a triangulation? A triangulation of a space X is a simplicial complex together with a homomorphism. So you see here we have a triangulation of the torus space. And you can see here a lot of little triangular elements. Beautiful. We understood this. Now, two other terms you have to understand. A click. A click complexes, also known as Whitney complexes, you have here, you have a graph. And as you can see, the red dots are, of course, your vertices, your black lines are your edges. And then you can see here, for example, if you have a triangular structure, beautiful, you fill it in, you have, of course, here your surface area. And if you have here, like here, one, two, three, and then you have one in the middle, you can construct here a tetrahedron. You can imagine that this is a tetrahedron, and I will show you in a second how you can imagine this. So the click of force of size four, hold on, hold on. Clicks of size four are shown as dark blue tetrahedra. You see we have here tetrahedron, we have here tetrahedron, and the rest we just have two dimensional surfaces. But here we have the nodes, we have all the edges of this element. Then we have this one, two, three, and on the bottom four surfaces. And then we have the volume element itself. So our space has much more complexity, and this is beautiful. And talking about Whitney, Whitney is a very famous figure in this uh, particular topic. And a Whitney triangulation of a two-dimensional manifold is an embedding of a graph G onto the two-dimensional manifold in such a way that every face is a triangle and every triangle is a face. You know this. We just had this. Just if you encounter these terms, I would like that you know what it is. It is simple. Now, message passing was in our classical graph neural network, our workhorse, how to do this. Now we take a step and go from message passing to topological message passing. And as you're familiar, if we use simplicial and or cell complexes in geometric deep learning as a richer underlying topological space to support the data and the computations performed on it, we have now the computation driven by the topological structure the neighborhood structure of core of these spaces, we refer to this as topological message passing. It is your message passing just in a higher dimensional topological space. In this framework, adjacent cells, potentially of different dimension, are exchanging those beautiful messages. Now, the important part is here, potentially of different dimension. Of course, everything is here from Bronstein, and if you want to have a literature, a very nice article, Learning on Topological Spaces. Or on Steam at all. Now, let me show you this. It might be not so easy to get, but look at this uh, visualization. I want to show you how suddenly a two dimensional surface area here in the left in our triangle and a three dimensional topological element are now this what we started out as a graph, and now this is our simplicial complex. Now, the big volume element, of course, you identified this is a tetrahedron. And you again, you have four vertices, you have six edges, you have four faces, and you have one volume element. Beautiful. Just to show you how you can imagine this. Literature, so important. If you want to go on, recommended Michael Bronstein, Pietra Velikovic, 
and of course the Bible, the blueprint by Bronstein, grids, graphs, groups, geodesic, and gorgeous. Now, this message passing in itself is also a quite complex process. You have here zero cells, one cells, and two cells. So we are not anymore in the triangulational uh, sp space, but we are in the general space. And we have adjacent cells, as you can see here, potentially of different dimensions, yes, zero, one, and two, are exchanging now messages. And now suddenly you do not have only the horizontal message passing, but you have vertical stacked message passing, because your space allows it to have additional dimensions. Okay, the computations performed by topological message passing are naturally hierarchical with information from, from the lower dimension cells here, our zero cells, to the higher dimensional cells and back. This could be seen as a form of a vertical pooling. Now, vertical pooling, and you're familiar with horizontal pooling, beautiful, almost the same. Now, if you look at this, there are some really interesting parts, because the blue dots between our nodes, the, the information exchange you're familiar with, they depict this horizontal information propagation between adjacent cells, cells in the boundary of the same higher dimensional cells. But now those red arrows depict vertical information propagation, whereby cells receive messages from lower dimensional cells in their boundary. This is the important term. So if you look at this, you can see here that the cross flow of information of higher dimensional objects is of course provides you much much more possibilities just think about we were limited with a graph to a two-dimensional chemical reactions and now of course we can go in in higher dimensional spaces okay again simple complexes our generalization of graph can be understood to store relations that go beyond the pairwise relation where we have our modeling of a graph of course yeah, sometimes you will see in the literature high dimensional edges. And when I encountered this, this term, technical term, I said, what are high dimensional edges? It's faces, it's two dimensional surface elements. So just that you know about this. From this perspective, it's natural to generalize a familiar message passing on graphs to simplicial complexes. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. What else I have? Ah, oh, yeah, this is it in simple terms. In a cell complex, the interaction of three chemical compounds can be encoded by connecting components by a two cell. And now we can do what we could not do with a pure graph. We have now a triangle with a surface area, so we can go uh, to three and four uh, chemical enzymes or chemical, I don't know, whatever you have, elements, reactives. And you can calculate this now with a GNN. And this is the beauty if you do molecular structure analysis. And of course, the computational flow of the model adapts to the presence of higher order interactions. Okay, this is great. So, summary. What was it all about? You remember, in the Stone Age, we had a point cloud. We just had clouds somewhere. We said this is a point cloud and we had two dimensions. And when we had here a cluster, we said, hey, this is a cluster. And some people said, hey, this is a cluster. So we had two clusters, yes or no, nobody could really be sure. And then suddenly somebody said, hey, this is in three dimension. Look, X, Y, and Z axis. And now this is in three dimension, yes. And then when it's in three dimension, we have, of course, we can build a three-dimensional vector space, so we add some structure, some topological structure to the space. We have suddenly the, the, the notion of a distance, of a metric. We can construct uh, metric spaces, and we can have here a vector space. For example, if you calculate the cosine similarity between vectors that are the embeddings of, I don't know, sentences or word embeddings or, or book embeddings or graph embeddings or, or paragraph embeddings, this is where you operate. And then, now we take this huge step from the point cloud. We construct our graph. We have certainly relations between functions, between those dots, wherever they are, wherever they are living. And then to go here from graphs, the GNN to simplicial complexes, you can see here suddenly we notice that we have here 
a two-dimensional surface area. This is the blue one. And we have here a tetrahedron. This is here the kind of green one in three dimension. So we add here to the pure graph a two-dimensional surface and a three-dimensional uh, topological element. And if you go from simplicial complexes like we have here, here we have almost something like a square. We go from, we miss the triangle and we go to non-triangular structure. We, we call it not a simplicial complex, but a general cell complex. So, and with this cell complex that we construct out of a graph, we have now a really, really powerful tool in our coding instruments. And we're going to use this. So graphs can be seen as a set of vertices, dot, 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 to which we attach edges, one cells. Edge, 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 edge. Beautiful. Simplicial complexes can be seen as graphs to which we attach two cells. Yes, I just showed you blue, our two-dimensional surface elements, and in green, the three-dimensional volume element. And of course, this is from Bronstein. And if you want to see this in three dimensions, sorry for this really simple presentation, but I think it shows you how you can combine from a graph that you have, you can construct simplicial complexes. And in here you only see simplicial complexes, but you can extend it to cell complexes. And you see that higher dimensional elements, higher dimensional topological spaces provide new ways to compute GNNs, to compute higher dimensional interactions. Because you have a higher dimensional topological space, you can do mathematics on. Great. Now, next one. Yeah, finally, the literature. Of course, uh, Michael Bernstein. There was this uh, famous Weisfeiler and Lehmann go topological message passing simplicial networks. And I'm not gonna show you too much. This is quite mathematically heavy, but this is message passing simplicial networks or MPSNS, if you wanna know. And here you have the hyperlink for the archive preprint. And just to show you uh, how the mathematical structure is about, this is just uh, the very beginning. You have 15 pages of mathematical appendix, especially in this preprint. So now you understand the reason why I wanted to, to focus on the main idea and not on the pure mathematical formulation. Because if you dive into mathematical formulation, you are lost for hours, believe me. So next step, we want to be able to have applications we can calculate with. To this, for this, we go another step and we go from message passing simplicial networks and we extend it now to regular cell complexes. So from the, the pure triangulation of our space, we go now to cell complexes, to a higher generalization. But this is it. So what the recently proposed message passing simplicial networks decouple the elements by performing message passing on the click complex of the graph, nevertheless, these models are severely constrained by the rigid combinatorial structure of simplicial complexes. Yes, we only have triangulars in all the dimension, but we can extend the results from simplicial complexes to regular cell complexes, topological objects that flexibly subsume uh, simplicial complexes and graphs. And they propose this and they call this method here CW network, CWNs. In particular, the authors write, we demonstrate the effectiveness of one such scheme based on rings when applied to molecular graph problems. And if you are a chemist and you do want to do the simulation, run the compute simulation, uh, or you want to find some, some new medicine and some new compound, you know what I'm talking about. Now, of course, there is a beautiful uh, GitHub repository. Please have a look. We are here at Twitter minus research at uh, CWN. And as you can see here, we have here all these beautiful uh, topics. We just talked about graph neural networks, message passing neural networks, simplicial neural networks, cell complex neural networks, and finally CWNs. And here you find the code. Dive in, you will spend hours and maybe days 
in this repository, but here you can find all the information that you might be looking for. And this was it. I say thank you and I hope I see you in the next video.